What's up everyone, this is Draco Evo back yet again with some latest Manchester United transfer news now and as always I try to get you guys the morning's papers, the morning's rumours, speculation in as early as possible and as always if you can see the bottom of your screen you've got all the timestamps of where to go for a particular subject that you may be interested in although I recommend you guys stick around but first up it is the thumbnail news obviously Jude Bellingham so uh, this is from the Birmingham Live and these are direct quotes coming from um, Kevin Phillips which I'll read you guys as well Jude Bellingham has enjoyed a breakthrough campaign at Birmingham City playing more than 30 times under Pep Clotet and scoring four goals Boris Johnson Jude Bellingham's future has been a subject of intense speculation for all of 2020. In January, Birmingham City knocked back a huge bid for their crown jewel from Manchester United. Now, this bid was widely subject to speculation. There was loads of um, sources coming out saying that Manchester United had made a bid of around £30 million for him, but it was nothing really concrete. So, let's drop that right here. Yet, the rumours persist and the transfer once the transfer window reopens, Bellingham will have his pick of suitors. Blues fans will hope he remains at St Andrews, while while those at Old Trafford, Borussia Dortmund, will be wanting one of the more, contents most sought-after teenager at their club. Liverpool, Chelsea, and Arsenal have all been credited with an interest, but from Blues striker Kevin Phillips, remember him, has hinted that 16-year-old is destined to become part of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's culture reset. So this is what Kevin Phillips has directly said. The history of Manchester United, the system they have there and the young kids they have had come through there, it is best place for a lot of rising stars like Hugh Gill. It looks like Jude Bellingham could be going there as well from what we are hearing. Mm. United have agreed terms with Joe Sunderland for Joe Eagle and also been linked with a move for Jadon Sancho. Bellingham has enjoyed a breakthrough campaign at Birmingham City, playing more than 30 times under Pep Clotet and scoring four goals. He has broken club's records along the way and done so playing in every midfield position and even as a false number nine. So there you have it. This is what um, Kevin Phillips, who obviously has ties to Birmingham City, he came up and said exactly this. It looks like Jude Bellingham could be going there as well from what we're hearing. Now, from what obviously he'll have inside news footballers tend to have a lot of these links especially if you've been playing football for a long time in in, a, in the same league um so it's it's good to hear someone like that coming out and saying from what we're hearing that jude bellinger might end up at manchester united as part of a transfer summer transfer for us now i don't know how much truth is in that but to put his neck out on the line he could be vying for attention or he could be in a legitimate position to say, you know what, I know some things and we're hearing things and Jude Bellingham does seem like he's going to end up at Manchester United. Now, looking at his stats, we briefly touched upon it. As you can see, he's played in every single position, but he's predominantly a central midfielder. He's played He played 35 games, scoring four goals and three assists. And for a 16-year-old English midfielder, that is phenomenal. I mean... To play at top flight football at the age of 16 and not be part, you know, matches or whatever, but to play 30 plus games in one season, it just shows the maturity that this lad has, the quality that this lad has. And of course, there's a host of clubs, particularly Borussia Dortmund, who are known to take youngsters and ship them off after three, four years, developing them, making a huge, huge profit along the way. Personally, for me, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, as I've said, he, he wants British talent, he wants young talent, he can build, he's focused around youth. Bringing in Jude Bellingham for, I don't know how much he'll demand, if a reported fee of £30 million was, was uh, rejected earlier in the year, then to pay upwards or more than £30 million for a 16 year old is a bit of a risk but that's the talent that everybody sees in the young fella. He seems like a mature player, he seems like he's got his head screwed on. The concerning thing for me is where does that leave someone like James Garner who's our own youth product who's got a great potential future ahead of him. I think he's 18, he's just, he's just turned 18 and he, he can have a fantastic career. He looks like a talent, he's absolutely tanking it in the under-23s 
But Jude Bellingham coming in, does it take James Garner's position? Or is that a position where in the future both of these can line up in the same midfield? I mean, that would be fantastic in my opinion to have both youngsters playing with each other for years and years and finally making the step up to become the first team midfielders for Manchester United. English, British as well, whatever you want to call it. I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has the right sort of vision for the club. I think we've tried and tested the the the, the star signings, etc. like Di Maria, Falcao, Sanchez. Never really works out. So why not go a different route and try out some of these youngsters? And we can potentially have a very young squad. I mean, right now we already have a young squad on average. But you see some of the youth players that's coming through. Mason Greenwood, Brandon Williams has been giving a lot of chance. Obviously, Marcus Rashford we know of. But on top of that, to add the likes of Jude Bellingham, James Garner. Then you've also got Ethan Laird, Angel Gomez, Tai Chong, all in around the horizon. It does look like the youngsters, a British, con you know, British youngsters, um, core of that is 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 looking bright, and that's what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Solskjaer wants to do. So that's the latest on Jude Bellingham to you know potential transfer to Manchester United. And as always, guys, get commenting, guys. You know me. I read that comments uh, from my previous transfer video and give you a bit of a shout out. So I think I did I did a transfer video about a couple of days ago in around Jack Grealish and uh, Jason Prince. Thank Jason Price. Sorry, my bad. My apologies there. But thank you so much for coming up with a comment and commenting on the video. It does it does get engaging, which is nice to see. And that's what I want to see. But he said that um, if Villa don't go down relegation, then Jason, they should keep him at Aston Villa, Jack Grealish. But if if Villa does eventually get relegated, if they do, do get relegated, then he should go for Manchester United because he believes that he can go places and also he's a real leader. And to be honest, to be frank, I, I totally agree with him. I think Jack Grealish is a leader. I think he has potential. The fact that he's carrying almost Aston Villa shows his character as well, his fighting mentality. I wouldn't sign Jack Grealish, as I said before and before that, to replace a potential outgoing midfielder such as, you know, Paul Pogba. I think to add Jack Grealish to that midfield would be great. I think we are a couple of midfielders short. I think a central midfielder and a CDM specialist we are short of. And Jack Grealish can certainly play the central midfield position. Obviously, Jude Bellingham, I'm not expecting him to come in and straight away be a first teamer. I think it will take him years to make the step up because, with all due respect, it's a massive step to Manchester United with, with the potential price tag that he could be carrying, with, with the with the bigger crowd, bigger fan base, uh, more pressure. Uh, it, 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 all he's got to be very careful how he develops, um, Jude Bellingham. And to be frank, central midfield position is is probably the hardest position to kind of break through in any club. I mean, as a, as a young striker, you can easily come in and kind of take it by the neck. But as a midfielder coming through, it's, it's certainly more more tougher. We rarely see 16, 17, 18 year old midfielders who play for top, top clubs, first team, week in, week out. We do see strikers that do play that. We have seen it. But that's the latest. Thank you so much, Jason Price. Really appreciate that, buddy. Next up, sticking to Manchester United Youth. So Angel Gomez is apparently... You know, this is from Charlotte Ducker, which is the Manchester United from goal. Um, the contract negotiations are at a standstill, so I'm going to read you out the um, article. The academy graduate is yet to put pen to paper on a new contract and is not now just a few weeks away from walking away from Old Trafford. Contract talks between Manchester United and Angel Gomez are at a standstill and time is running out as the 19-year-old only has a few weeks left on his current deal. Gomez has been offered a new contract at Old Trafford, but the situation is at a stalemate, with the two parties yet to reach an agreement. The teenager could leave the club on a free transfer next month, next month as his current deal expires at the end of June. Look, <clears throat> he's a great talent. We've seen him, what he can do at youth level. I do have my reservations for him. I think he's not built enough for the Premiership. And I think his mental state is, is a bit different. Like, if he really wanted to stay at Manchester United, he would have signed that contract long back, especially coming from a youth uh, background, the direct youth academy player. Also, I think his head has been turned by some other clubs, probably offered him more money, more playing time, promises. And that's why he's just a couple few weeks away. You know, we're looking at 
just under three weeks away from reaching June and we could lose him on a free which is a bit of a shame I think he has potential and it will really bite us in the ass if three four years down the line this this kid becomes a star and we've just let him go for free um, smells of Paul Pogba everywhere and he could come back and haunt us but at this current state I think we should get rid of anyone that doesn't want to stay or remotely thinks you know he, he can't do it at Old Trafford or doesn't want to stay just get rid of them we'd rather have players wanted to play for the badge who loves the club and will give 110 percent on the field bit of a shame if 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 he runs down his contract but it is what it is next up is igalo i've seen a lot of you guys covering great videos by the way i've seen a lot of you guys covering um audien igalo but this is from sky sports audien igalo so his parent club shanga shenwa expect Odion Igalo to return from his loan spell at Manchester United in time for the start of the new Chinese Super League season, which is scheduled to begin in July. Manchester United are keen to extend Igalo's loan to cover the end of Premier League season, the date of which remains unclear amid the pandemic. As it stands, Shanga Shenhua will only allow Igalo to remain at Old Trafford if it is on a permanent deal and the Chinese club value him upwards of £20 million. So that's the latest on Igalo. I don't understand. I mean, China has been hit, you know, one of the worst countries in the world in, in terms of pandemic and they're looking to start the season in July and they want Igalo back. I, I do feel that it's, it's probably just, just a push towards Manchester United. Like, you know, give us the money or we're going to recall him back. I don't think the Chinese league will start anytime soon um, and Igalo does offer us something different certainly depth but also a different type of striker different cover that we need up front as well that's the whole point we bought him on for long really is is to have him as as cover because we went through a very bad, bad patch in terms of injury up front but I'll be very disappointed if 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 we cannot strike a deal to extend the loan um, I don't think the Chinese Super League will start in July. I do believe that this is this is all smokescreen to kind of get United to pay pay up and kind of force our hand and say, look, you want him, you pay twenty million pound. Otherwise, we're taking him back because our league is starting in July. So that's my thoughts on Odeni Gallo. I would like for us to keep him if we can strike extend the loan deal um, and take it from there. Really. Next up, we have Musa Dembele again. I've seen you guys. Some of you guys have covered that news, but. Um, Frank Lampard could be Lampa. Frank Lampard could be set to be disappointed in the summer transfer market whenever that will be open for business after it was revealed that one of his striking targets prefers a move to Manchester United. The Daily Star note that the Red Devils are growing increasingly confident of being able to sign Leon's Musa Dembele in a £60 million deal and have been chasing him for a year as they see the former Celtic man as the true successor to Lukaku now at Inter. So that's the latest on on uh, Musa Dembele. I, I, covered, I did cover it a few days ago in my transfer video. Apparently Manchester United have been after him for over a year and um, they see similar, similarities to Lukaku on him. Hopefully not the touch, obviously. Um, but... It's a different type of striker, isn't it? Like you look at Odion Igalo, he's, he's more of a target man, much like how Lukaku was. The difference between Lukaku was the fact that he his first touch was so bad. Igalo's first touch, you can see as soon as that happens, it gives an outlet for a striker to hold the ball and for on Russian midfielders or wingers. And Musa Dembele is, is, is that, he can play that type of role. And certainly he, he can rotate with Anthony Marshall. There are 50 plus games if you're in all competition throughout the season. Plenty of games. You know, you've got injuries, rest, internationals, whatever you're going to do it. You know, having more than one options would be great. Where does that leave Mason Greenwood though? That's my main concern. Because if you look at Musa Dembele's uh, stats, he's only 23. That means he's if we end up signing him for a potential £60 million, he's going to be in it for the long run, right? And Mason Greenwood just turned 18, I believe. And Marshall is still young, so well unless Oli is going two up front, like in a diamond, where does that leave Rashford? You know, it's it's a bit of a dilemma. Um, but stats are impressive. Center uh, center forward position, forty two games, twenty two goals, just fifty percent of the time he's, this guy scores. He's got a great record, and but that's in the in the League One, and I think with all due respect, League One is not the um, the strongest. Because you just have to look at the Champions League. In the Champions League, he's played seven games and assisted only one time. So I think that could be a bit of a problem. Um, him making a potential step up for a 
potential 60 million pound and not performing in the Premier League as well as you know Mason Greenwood's development being being broken of some sort I do have my reservations I do believe that if we're going to go for a striker um go go for 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 a striker who's happy to play the rotation because someone like Moussa Dembele I don't think he'll be happy to come in to play a rotational striker especially if Manchester United is paying a lot of money potentially for for someone like him but that's my thoughts on um Moussa Dembele next up and the last bit of news is Andre Onana so United, Manchester United are reportedly interested in signing Ajax keeper Andre Onana as a replacement for David De Gea. So according to a report from The Sun, Manchester United could set to join Chelsea in the race to sign Ajax goalkeeper Andre Onana in the summer transfer window. Ooh, what is that? Onana came through the youth ranks at Barcelona's La Masaya Academy, so a lot of respect for him there. Onana featured 39 times in all competitions during the 2019-2020 season after the campaign got suspended in the Netherlands the Cameroon International posted a message on his social media all but confirming an exit from the club Chelsea have been linked with a move to the former Barcelona man for, the, for a while now um, so the Blues boss has done a solid job in his first season obviously um, but Chelsea's goalkeeper's future at the club has become a topic of speculation ever since Lampard dropped him for a handful of games uh, earlier this season. It is believed that the manager is not convinced by the Spaniard and wants to replace him with this summer, leading the interest to Onana. However, they will now have to contend with the interest from arch rivals Manchester United as well as the Red Devils goalkeeping department looks sorted with David De Gea being current first choice, while Sergio Romero has proven to be an excellent backup. Moreover, Dean Henderson, who is currently away on loan at Sheffield United, the club has someone ready to take over the mantle of a number one in the future. However, according to transfer expert Duncan Castles, Manchester United are not happy with De Gea's form ever since he signed a bumper £375,000 a week contract in September last year. So, so that's the latest on Onana. I mean, he's, he's a fantastic young keeper. And I have said that in my match previews before the season got suspended. David De Gea has made a lot of mistakes. I think he, his mind and heart has changed ever since the new contract has come in. Maybe he's played a lot of games. I mean, he has played a lot of games for United for years and years. And the pressure and then the management and the structure change. He's seen it all throughout the years from from David Mo Ferguson to David Moyes to, to Louis van Gaal to Jose Mourinho to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I mean, that's five managers he's seen changes. And he's been it through it all. I mean, you know, not many players at the club have been in David De Gea's shoes, obviously. And also the pressure of playing at, at and in, for Spain. I think he just needs a bit of a timer, you know. I think he genuinely... I think this, this sort of... Um, break you can say has probably done him real good in my opinion and I think David De Gea can come back he's still young in terms of goalkeeper's um, age but I think he can come back a very strong goalkeeper and he's still world class in my opinion Onana coming in where does that leave Sergio Romero who's the best backup keeper in the world where does that leave Dean Henderson I think this particular transfer does not make sense unless Manchester United are hellbent on getting rid of David De Gea, which I don't believe they are. But that's all the latest Manchester United transfer news. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Remember, guys, get involved in the comments. I do pick them up and read them out and have a bit of a discussion. And I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's transfer daily video. As always, guys, stay farafari.